Aw, oh, man. What's wrong? Some asshole posted a mean comment on my soda fallout review. What, what are you, you gonna, gonna do, do about it? Oh. I know what I'm gonna do. Why not just delete the comment? I mean, it's the internet after all. You just gotta take this sort of thing with a grain of salt. Did you imagine if they made a cheesy made for TV movie about this? Joe? What? Can you stop reading the title of the video and spoiling what the review is about? Tell what it's about. Yeah, but we're gonna do like a funny skit that led up to it. Whatever, Cyberbully. Cyberbully is one of those let's scare clueless people into whatever agenda we have kind of films. Much like Cyber Seduction, a lifetime movie about a kid who becomes addicted to porn, or at least clothes women dressed sexually. Reefer Madness, a 1936 film about people who start a life of crime because they smoked some of the devil's lettuce one time. Okay. While I wouldn't go as far to call Cyberbully straight up propaganda, it's pretty close to reaching that mark. The film was a made for TV movie for ABC Family that was collaborated by Seventeen Magazine in an attempt to delete digital drama. Well, good job with that. Well, yeah, I should mention the music in this movie is fucking awful, so sorry about that. I love the uses of slashes for the L's. We're so cool, guys! We're gonna introduce protagonist Taylor, who's using a chat room with her friends. Typical teenage girl. Taylor, have you had breakfast? No, I'm not hungry. Not acceptable! We also have Samantha, who's Taylor's friend and uses in... Is that an Xbox logo? Bye. Who are you calling a brat? Private. Well, what you do online isn't exactly private. So we're not even two minutes into this film and they are already forcing the moral of the film down our throats. They don't even try to be subtle about it. Might as well just say, stay in school and don't do drugs. Don't you dare miss your bus again! It wasn't my fault last time! Wait, what the hell was that cut? You have the mom yelling to the brother, and then they cut to the mom outside, but you still have the brother's voice overlaid? That's so jarred. Why not just cut to a shot of the brother yelling, or extend the shot for the mom walking out of the house before cutting to her outside? And she's not even walking off the porch, it just looks like she teleported. I mean, two seconds later they show the brother running down the steps, so why don't they just give us a shot of the brother and have him say the line then? What? Wow, when have we ever criticized editing and cinematography? Yeah, you should know we do is make jokes the whole time. Look, even Doug Walker takes things seriously sometimes. We, we gotta hold ourselves to a better standard. What you need is a brain. Can't hit me on my birthday! Honestly, this has to be the most generic opening to a teen film. You, you got a overbearing mom, the annoying little brother. It's like they had no creativity whatsoever. Like, does this boring ass opening really hook you with it all? No, it's not even all that interesting. The characters are so generic that basically any scene could have introduced them. It takes all two seconds. The only thing we seem to get here is that it's Taylor's birthday. Good for her, I guess. We get introduced to Cheyenne, who is Taylor's other friend, and it is shown she has a cell phone she can text on. Which begs the question of why she needed to have a conversation with Samantha on the computer where she has to worry about her mom looking over her shoulder. Your dad had moved out three months ago, you wouldn't want to party either. Hey, you know that's not it, I don't care about that. And we also find out that Taylor's dad moved out. I'm sure this will be completely relevant to the story. Uh, spoiler alert, it really won't. Did you hear Kelly's pregnant? What? Wait, how would you know? She moved to Florida. Clicksters. Hello. They also introduced Clickstreams, which is the copyright avoided website this movie will use. Seriously? Clickstreams? That's the best thing you come up with? Sounds like a bad point. Apparently someone actually made a real Clickstreams website. Yeah, that's great marketing. Let's make a website where someone was cyberbullied. That would be like advertising SeaWorld in a Jaws movie. Although they actually did do that. My brother wears shoes like that. <laughs> He's 10. <laughs> Settle down on the Regina George impression there, young lady. This movie is unoriginal enough. I also like that she's eating a lollipop and has no high school students do, apparently. Like, you just know they wanted to have her smoking or whatever, but the network wouldn't have it. I guess we just learned nothing from four kids. Love high school. So oh, best years of our lives. Amazing. <laughs> oh, believe me, with the upcoming economic and climate crisis, as well as the raising tensions between political parties, the future ain't looking bright. <laughs> Uh, definition of contrarian? Me. Definition of lazy? You. Do your own homework. Forget you. Taylor, you're a brainiac. You should know. No, no, no. I have seen this film and I can assure you, Taylor is no brainiac. So anyways, we are introduced to Scott, who is Taylor's love interest, and has the personality of sandpaper, and that's putting it nicely. Much like Taylor's non-existent father, he only exists as a plot device. 
Actually, now that I think about it, a good amount of characters in this movie only exist to move the plot along. When I look at him, my throat swells up. You do know that Scott is just a dumb jock, right? No, he's not. Nah, if he was just a dumb jock, he'd actually have personality and character, which he lacks, so I gotta agree with Taylor here. If you were on Clicksters, then you could send him a hot meter quiz and find out if he likes oh, you. Stop, that is so sixth grade. Let's not insult so this movie's demographic. Plus, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. My mom, like, stands over my shoulder the whole time. <laughs> She has computer monitoring software. She goes on all the sites I've been on. There's no way. I mean, it clearly didn't stop you from saying something inappropriate in the chat room earlier. Her mom is so backwards. She can't even have internet on her phone. Oh, how does she live? I honestly have a question if this line is ironic or not from the writers. On this day in history, the great bard William Shakespeare took his first breath in 1564. Who the fuck teaches like that? Takes his first breath? Also, Shakespeare's official day of birth was never recorded. She can't exactly do this day in history for it. The closest we have is the day of his baptism. They later mentioned two other events that happened on April 23rd, so perhaps that was the basis? The thing is, Shakespeare officially died on April 23rd, so why don't they just have that be the day in history instead of his birth? The very first motion picture was shown in 1896. Theodore Roosevelt delivered his man in the arena speech in 1910. You don't think mentioning the birth of the greatest U.S. president, James Buchanan, is worth mentioning? What about New Coke? God, no wonder education is failing. Also on this day in history, just a little closer to home, Taylor Hillridge was born. Happy birthday, Taylor. Fuck this teacher, man. It's already awkward enough to tell everyone it's your birthday, but now we're doing it like this? Fuck you. Happy birthday. Dad's birthday too. Cool. Save some pussy for the rest of us hot shot. I swear when you touch my shoulder, there was like electricity. Oh. Yeah, that's called static electricity. Please. No, I'm serious. I felt a tingle. Okay, do you think you'd ask me to the spring fling? No. Why? Scott Ozick is not the romantic type. I love how these bitches are just hoping for him to ask them, you know what, ladies? And this goes out to all of you watching at home too. Take the initiative for once. Why does that guy always gotta be the one to ask you out? If you have a crush on someone, then why not ask them out, hmm? It's the stupid tradition society has, and it makes no sense. Okay, remember, it was your dad that left you guys for a 25-year-old girl. If that doesn't tell you how scummy guys hey, are. leave my dad out of it, okay? Yeah, I think we would all prefer if you did. I'm telling you guys, the dad literally does nothing this whole movie. My own computer? Oh, lucky! Taylor then gets her own laptop. I think you can all see where this is going. What could possibly go wrong? There's no catch. It's all yours, private. You can use it wherever you want if you follow my rules. No inappropriate sites and no giving out personal information. I know the rules, but still you're trusting me? Thank you. I gotta go hook it up. Good to go hook it up. It's a damn laptop. Do you know if your father called Taylor today? Don't think so. Well, she told him she didn't want to speak to him ever again, so... Yeah, I mean, that'll do it. What is my favorite body part? I have to answer these questions on my profile? Just say eyes. Wait, hang on. What kind of underwear am I wearing right now? What kind of website would ask that? Oh my god, just get to the damn bullying already. God, look at this web design. It's hideous. This movie's from 2011, so competent web design did exist back then. Lindsay commented on our photo. Oh, Lindsay. That's not very nice. I do find it interesting that the film never explains why Lindsay seems to hate Taylor. The movie explains stupid stuff with her absent father and the process of setting up the social media profile but cannot even be bothered to develop its antagonist. Priorities, am I right? I like how they just laugh off all the mean comments and don't let it get to them. Imagine if they did that the whole movie. Maybe it was a Freudian slip, uh, you know. Maybe you don't like history, so you accidentally drop your book. I don't know, I like history. Oh, me too. Oh. It's my favorite. Caleb's kind of a weird dude, huh? Yeah, a little bit. So originally I was thinking this guy was trying to hit on Taylor, but he's later revealed to be gay, so what's the point of these awkward interactions? To show he's weird? I mean, I don't know, he just comes off as a bit quirky, but I don't know if I'd call him weird. So I saw you on Clicksters now. I like it better than Facebook, a lot more raw, you know? Excuse me, what the fuck? So Facebook exists in this universe, but they only use the shitty knockoff because it's raw? It really doesn't appear all that different. 
What, did this movie try to combine Facebook and 4chan and not realize why that combination literally makes zero sense? I'm sure as hell not. Say what you want about Dan Schneider, but hot damn could he cast some good jailbait in his teen shows. Oh, by the way, the shitty music continues. Taylor then talks more on clicksters and deals with more assholes and it just kind of shrugs it off. It's amazing to me that she goes from this to trying to kill herself pretty quickly. What? Is that clicksters? Can you get an account? No. Please just don't. No. Why? Eric, no, get out of my room, little oh. worm. Go. You don't have a computer. How are you expecting to use said account? A bikini shot? Come on. He was joking. You are so naive. I can think of at least two girls he's hooked up with in the past month. I mean, he's clearly showing interest. Why can't he try and pursue a relationship? It's not love. I I'm sorry, but waiting for a guy to type, hey baby, send me a bikini shot, is not love. Well then what is? Sleeping with a guy the second time you guys go out and then wondering why he never talks to you again? Damn. Get out. What? You can't be serious. Out. <laughs> Someone's salty! So Taylor gets another friend request from a guy named James. Dad's in California. You talk to him? Yeah, he called me. Maybe call me. You literally said you never wanted to talk to him again. What the fuck do you think? So then Taylor just kind of finds out someone got into an account. I'm gonna defend this movie one time. I hear a lot of people complaining that Taylor refers to someone getting into her account as hacking. Look, somebody figured out my password and they hacked my profile. But the definition of hacking is the gaining of unauthorized access to data in a system or computer, which is what happened here. Under federal law, you could still face charges if you use unauthorized access to someone's computer whether or not you found out the password, even if they didn't log out and you got on. So I mean, you could call it hacking if you wanted to, I don't know. I'm a naughty bad girl, someone should spank me? I'm a naughty bad girl, someone should spank me? Well, someone has a sick sense of humor. You gotta change this. You gotta change your password. No one should look at this. Wait, she still has access to the account? Then just delete it. Or say it was a joke. Or say someone got your password, which is what happened. I mean, it looks to me we we're getting a lot of attention. You were already talking about how great it was to have handsome guys interested in you. Well, here you go. No, it's too late. What do you mean it's too late? Just fucking delete it, dumbass. It sounds to me like you'll get more popular as a result. Who do you think changed your status? Who knew your password? I don't know. I don't know. I made Samantha and Shay and look away when I set it up. Oh, Taylor, I flipped around this website. It's completely inappropriate for someone your age. There are no boundaries. That just sounds like the internet in general. Come on. Look at you. You're in tears after one day. Just shut it down. Shut it down, goy. Oh man, we're not we know we are, we can't make jokes like that. But yeah, I guess she probably should listen to her mom here. The internet is not the place for you. But seriously, what the hell? You're able to brush off everything else and then suddenly you start to get all emotional at what people say? What the hell is this writing? You can't have a character just change on a dime like that. So then Taylor just responds to Lindsay using insulting language. Bitch! Wait, so Lindsay already commented. So did she just comment again on the same post? Does she not have anything better to do with her life? You can't take that stuff seriously. Besides, nobody's even gonna remember by Monday. Yeah, pretty much. Unless this movie says otherwise, because it's fucking stupid and doesn't know how the internet works. So, so after assaulting us with what horrible music we get to this scene. Eric. Tell her. Me and my friend Cooper are the ones who change the status on your profile. What? Look, use the old cat's name for your we password. Kill you. What? What? So then it wasn't a password no one could guess. What is even this kid's motivation for doing this? because she kicked him out of his room one time? I mean, he clearly knows how to use the internet, so why not just make an account on your own? Also, he doesn't have a computer, so how the fuck did he get away with this? I thought the family computer had parental controls on it, so how did he get to clicksters? Look it, I am really upset with him too. I've grounded him for a month. Arthur, this means no TV for a week. But I'm really upset with you too. What did I do? I looked to see if you took down your profile. Okay, I never said I'd do that. Well, on your page, you posted a comment and called someone a bitch. bitch! Whoa, now you're spying on me? Spying? Did we not just discuss how the mom found out the brother hacked into the account? 
Obviously, she had to look at the page of the website at one point during this discussion. Taylor, when you put something online, it's no longer private. Everyone can see it. Yeah, you fucking said that already at the beginning of the movie. And you know my rule. You can't use the internet to be insulting or call anyone name. No. The rules were no inappropriate websites and no sharing personal information. And to make sure you won't do it again, I'm taking away your laptop. Oh, come on. Why the hell didn't she just do that to begin with? Going on the internet means responsibility and consequences. You'll get it back in three days. Three days! Three days. So she can just go back to doing what she was doing already? What kind of worthless punishment is that? How many guys did you hook up with this weekend? Ten? Twenty? <laughs> you should have a drive through <laughs> Okay, why is she upset now? This bitch literally insults her at every single opportunity, every single day, and it never got to her. But now it does? You said everyone was gonna forget it by Monday. Yeah, yeah but this, this was, was real life, they fucking would Back in class, we get another amazingly awkward scene with Caleb. Oh, joy. I saw what people were saying about you online. I don't know why they have to do that. It sucks. How would you know? He's trying to be supportive and all she gives him is how would you know? What an ungrateful bit. Uh, pardon me. Wow, I really thought you'd go all the way that time. I guess you've never been on my page. There's fairy, fruit, homo, two gay to live. Okay, so for those of you who have never seen this movie, I want you to just guess what Taylor's response is. Just guess, because I guarantee you it'll be surprising. So just just guess, okay? Are you ready? Yeah, but I mean, it's not really the same thing. I mean, you really are gay. What they're saying about me isn't true. Whoa! Whoa! Okay! What the fuck? So if you're actually gay, it's okay for people to call you a derogatory term? That's like if some black guy was like, they're calling me the n-word, and you said, but you're actually black, so who cares? If anything, it's worse, because they're insulting this guy for a part of who he is, and what he can't change. I mean, it sucks for Taylor, but if they're making up lies, then whatever. I mean, if it's not true, so you could just say, I'm a virgin, so obviously I can't be all these things you're saying. Honestly, I question why Caleb isn't the main character here. I mean, a movie about a gay man being bullied online and learning to love himself? That sounds far more interesting than this bullshit. Really, most cyberbullying is exactly what's happening here. People saying lies? You ever go on r slash roast me? It's just assumptions. What the hell does anyone on the internet know? Nobody knows shit about you, so trolls can only make surface level insults. Well, unless you're Chris Chan. Later at home, we see that Taylor is still being cyberbullied. I'm, I'm just wondering, wondering why you don't delete, delete these comments and hate them so much. There's an X button right there. And why doesn't she know she's a loser? And then James wrote, hate or suck, the girl is more cool than you. He defended me. He's a gentleman. Or he's a simp, but I guess this predates that term. Honey, you really need to go to your room. Dad would have never let you ground me for something this stupid! I still have no idea why he's so bitter. I get my laptop back tomorrow, right? Yeah. You can take your profile down. Are you saying I have no choice? No, I'm saying I'm trusting you to make the right choice. Well, who says that's the right choice? I question if there's any privacy settings on this website. Like most social media, you could just make your account private if you so desire. You know, everyone at my school is on that site. I was just having fun. It was Eric who messed it all up for me. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of the truth here. Honestly, people get cyberbullied without getting their accounts hacked. Seems more like in this situation, she just happened to have a piece of shit brother. Such a specific reason for her to get cyberbullied. Like, you make a whole movie solely about cyberbullying, and then you find the stupidest reason for the actual cyberbullying to happen? Again, this movie would have been better if it was about Caleb. Back like at school, it appears that people are still harking over this thing that happened like, what, two weeks ago? I think it's good for you to see the difference between a guy that is genuinely nice to you and a guy that just wants to hook up with you. Whoa, whoa wait. You don't like Scott anymore? Ugh, like that was ever gonna happen. Don't exactly understand the difference between Scott and James. I mean, they both talked online. The only difference is that Scott asked for a bikini pic, but like, whatever. Now, I know the big plot twist is that Samantha is actually James using a fake profile, but this is still dumb. Oh, I need ketchup. Hang on. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. I was just going to get ketchup. Oh, me too. What was that, like one second? You are? Yeah, I heard somebody hacked your profile. It happened to me once. Wow, it's almost like, if you say something out of character online, people will believe you when you say someone got into your account. The three of us are 
promised we're gonna go together. Mom, why can't you just be happy for her? Yeah, I'd be happy for you if someone you liked us, yeah? A minute ago, you liked James. I don't know if I would like him in real life, you know? I've never met him. Someone's jelly. You wanna know about Scott? Charlie told him about some stuff he and I did, and you know what Scott did? He laughed. You're gonna get hurt, Taylor. Just because you got dumped doesn't mean I will. Yeah, you kind of walked into that one, I'm afraid. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Your father called? Uh, no. Why is the mom so eager to talk about her ex-husband who apparently left her for a younger woman? Like, wouldn't this be an uncomfortable subject for her? Oh, by the way, remember the dad that has absolutely no relevance to the story? Yeah, he still has no relevance to the story. So now apparently James lies about sleeping with Taylor and contracting an STD. STD! Okay, so by this point it's obvious he's either a catfish or a friend of Lindsay and the other people. But I guess Taylor's just too stupid to figure that out. Taylor then goes outside and cries. With no tears. <laughs> 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 what, so big? Well, he's full of crap, so yeah, he's fake. I bet you a hundred bucks someone just put up that fake profile. Didn't I just say that that was obviously the case? Oh god. For all the stuff that I told him. I threw up my dad cheating on my mom. Like all kinds of personal stuff. Well that's just not smart. It's the same fucking shot every time. Guys, we get what school she goes to. Dang. Should've brought the disinfectant. Don't want to use these sinks after the skank patrol. How convenient is it that Lindsay and her squad just always show up at the worst moments? Calling me a skank now, too. Yeah, I know, it sucks. No, I've never been called a name at school, ever. Okay, really? Really? You expect me to believe that? So then she just fucking decides to leave her two other friends because Lindsay made fun of her. Even though that was exactly what she's been doing since the beginning of the movie. I mean, now she has zero friends, and I doubt Lindsay's just gonna magically approve of her now, so what exactly was the thought process here? But now Taylor's all depressed because she and everyone around her are fucking morons. None of this is my fault. Yeah, well, Samantha's standing by me, why can't you? Well, why can't you just not flirt with people that you don't know? Didn't you encourage this? See, they call this as my fault. This was all your fault. You knew the dangers. You're legally to blame. You called Lindsay a bitch, bitch online. Of course she was gonna come after you. But she was going after them since the beginning of the movie. She was literally posting hateful stuff day one on her making an account. I failed to see how her calling Lindsay a bitch made any difference. See, this is what happens when you underdevelop your characters. Keep crying, baby! A made spaghetti for dinner if you'd like some. How could you blow off the spaghetti like that? Show me your clicksters page now. I can't take this shit seriously because of the stupid ass name of the website. Why didn't you shut this down when I asked you to? And why would you subject yourself to this? That's the question I asked myself when I watched this. Oh, oh wait, she was talking to Taylor. Oh no, it wasn't Lindsay. You know, wasn't this established to be a school group for the website? Why is a guy who supposedly doesn't go to the same school able to post here? And why would Samantha do this? I don't fucking know. I mean, all Taylor did was retort to her bitching whenever she showed interest in a guy that she didn't like. Was it to protect her from being hurt? Well, good fucking job there, bitch. Seriously, this reveal makes no fucking sense. Honestly, the characters in this movie are just so one-dimensional and unlikable. I'm just hoping the quiet white boy turns the school in a counter-strike. Oh, no, no, no. No, you cannot joke about that. Yeah, that's not funny. Well, someone has a sick sense of humor. Taylor then calls her dad. But don't worry, he doesn't do anything because he has no relevance to the story. Hey, dad, it's me, Taylor. I know you probably didn't pick up because you think I'm so mad at you, but, um, look, I take back what I say about never wanting to speak to you again. Yeah, because yeah, you, you actually need, need something. 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 Well, why wouldn't you treat a cyber bully like any other bully? Oh, I can't control the internet or what students do on their own computers at home. But like, there's clearly bullying happening at the school though. Could you not do something about that? Using anonymous usernames, you can't tell who's who and who started what. What the fuck? Yes, you can! Everyone is using their actual names here except for the one fake profile. You could tell exactly who caused it. Half the time I don't know where I stand legally. I keep asking the school board to give me some policies that has some teeth that I can use to bite down on these kids, but... 
Holy shit, just don't go on the website anymore. Problem solved. Why are they so obsessed with this bitch? It's like she's a low cow or something. So sorry, Taylor. None of this should have happened. You caused it. Uh, maybe we should forget school today. You want to ditch? I'll, I'll ditch with you. No, I want to talk to Scott. Of course. Look, you should just get Scott to give you a ride home too, because I'm done trying to be your friend. Have a nice life, Taylor. Yeah, how dare you not ditch class with me? Yeah, no, I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, I was just wondering if we were still going to the dance tonight. My mom pissed me off last night and said I have to go with Marty Fox. Her mom's best friends with my mom, and yeah. What? Huh? <laughs> of course. Seriously, what the hell is this movie? By God. Well, you tried. You tried the artsy camera movement. Taylor then goes back home to her laptop that she still has for some reason to watch the video that broke the camel's back. I'm Taylor Hillridge. Wanna have a good time? Five bucks, all it takes. One? Fifty cents? How about I pay you to show me a good time? You gotta no, love the effort that went into this. I mean, they put out a life-size picture of her face to use as a mask. I act like I'm the most holy and pure thing at school, but I'm really the dirtiest little whore. Whore! So all this video does is continue to call Taylor a whore, but like, that's what they've been doing the whole movie, so I'm not exactly sure what it being in video form does to make it worse. Real original, original song choice there, guy. So then Taylor makes a video saying she's gonna kill herself. Jeez, maybe she is an attention whore. Samantha calls Taylor's mom and they both go to the house. Uh, I think something's wrong with Taylor. She posted a video online and now she's not answering the phone. And I'm really freaking out. Uh, Samantha, slow down. I can't understand. Sounds like she enunciated every word pretty clearly. I don't know. Taylor? Where's Taylor? How should I know? I'm grounded. I love how fucking chill he is. Why is he on the computer if he's grounded? Is it the whole reason he's grounded because of something he did on a computer? Now you may think she's gonna walk in and see a corpse hanging from the ceiling, but no. Instead, we get to watch what I may honestly think is the most unintentionally funny scene I have ever watched in a movie. Uh, I can't <laughs> Jesus Christ, I love how this implies she was just struggling with the childproof cap for however long. I guess those are designed for dumb teenagers as well as kids. Like, even if she wasn't in the right state of mind, it's just a childproof cap. It's not that hard to use. Also, she just loudly moans as soon as Samantha walks in and says, I can't get the cap off, as if Samantha's just gonna help her kill herself. I guess this is what they need when they say men are more likely to commit suicide while women are just more likely to attempt. What the fuck is she even trying to overdose on here? Flintstones vitamins? Like seriously, what is it? So then she screeches when Samantha attempts to take the vitamins away and somehow that results in the cap coming off? <laughs> what do you mean, what did you do? The pills are right there on the floor, just start shoveling them in your mouth. Well now you're all germy and gross. Yeah, regardless if this was a genuine attempt at suicide or not, the way this is acted and just played out makes it seem it was for attention, but in the context of the story, I don't think that's meant to be. I don't quite understand why they'd make it appear that way if they didn't want it to. Just like the lollipop earlier in the movie, I imagine they probably wanted to have her hang herself or slit her wrist or whatever, but the network said no, so we get this comedy gold. Love how uninterested the brother looks. Motherfucker, you caused this. This was all your fault. This was all your fault. You knew the dangers. You're legally to blame. We then cut to the hospital where Taylor is recovering. From what exactly, I don't know. I'm sleepy. That's the sedative. It's starting to wear off. They sedated her. She seemed like they were able to get her under control last we saw. I don't understand how this happened. Did she tell you she was so depressed? You, you saw it happen! You knew about everything! Why are you suddenly acting so clueless? So you're probably thinking this movie is almost over, but guess what? We still have nearly 40 minutes left in this damn thing. For some reason they decided to put the climactic turning point in the story only 45 minutes in. So the rest of the movie is just so goddamn boring as a result. I almost lost her. I mean, not really. Last I checked, she couldn't get the cap off. So I thought this was some made-up game they used for this movie, but no, this is an actual game. 
Why they picked some random freeware game is a mystery to me. Check in on Taylor every 10 minutes and call me if she wakes up. Eric, I'm serious. I didn't unground you so that you could play video games all day. That's what he was apparently still doing while grounded anyway. Oh, and your dad might call? He left a message. Oh, oh my god, god shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up about, about the dad. dad. Why is this movie so obsessed with bringing him up? What does he add? He adds absolutely nothing, as I said. So then we see that no one's upset over Taylor's attempted suicide, as if people wouldn't virtue signal the fuck out of this in real life. You're such an ass, Scott. You know what? Go fuck yourself, movie. This movie just wants to make me hate Scott for whatever reason, but seriously, what did he even do? He was nice to Taylor, he asked her out, and only couldn't because his mom forced him to go with someone else. Then, he is getting accused of being the cause of Taylor's attempted suicide, which is objectively not true, and is rightfully trying to defend himself. Why are we supposed to hate this guy? He is the only person in this movie that isn't annoying or retarded or whatever. Well, Caleb's a nice guy too, actually. Also, what right do you have to call out anyone on being an ass when you were more complacent in the side rolling than anyone? Fuck you, Samantha, you fucking bitch. You don't get to judge anyone. It's gone. James's profile, it was here yesterday and now it's deleted. Ugh, I should have printed it out when I had the chance. Oopsie daisies. Does Taylor hate me? Of course, make it about yourself. When is this piece of shit movie over? Do you think that this James person could be a fake? What? What kind of question is that? Samantha already told you and Taylor also was aware of the fact he was fake. This should be common knowledge. My daughter tried to commit suicide because your daughter was bullying her. I have posts from Lindsay Love, your daughter, mocking Taylor. If my daughter expressed her opinion about anything... Demeaning, insulting opinions... That's her right. At least according to the Constitution. I love how this guy has not an ounce of sympathy that was some woman's daughter tried to kill herself. You're going to defend her? It's called freedom of speech. You're communist it's the First Amendment. You might want to give it a read. <laughs> he got you there. Are you really going to do it? Well, you sure didn't fucking try hard enough. I would've been mad if you did. Nah, nah, I don't know about that. If you hadn't put that video up, I could've been the one finding you all... dead. I'm still waiting for this fucking guy to apologize, or at least acknowledge what he did wrong. You know this guy's just gonna be a 4chan incel in a few years. Eric, go get the laptop, I have to see what they're saying. Fine, I'll get it. No, it's fine, I got it, I got it. I still, for the life of me, don't understand why this movie is acting like she's dying and needs to recover. She literally did nothing to herself. Not a single pill went down her throat. I'm not exactly sure why she's all bedridden. Despite the mother eyeing this laptop, for writing purposes it literally hasn't been used for anything but social media. I bet the wallpaper hasn't even been changed. So Taylor goes to a cyberbully support group? Oh dear. They also hold this shot of the mom crying, which would have probably been effective if they didn't put generic sad piano music behind it. Like, now it just feels manipulative. This movie did make me shed tears. Tears of laughter, though. How could this happen to me? For some reason, she goes to the meeting late? Why? I have no idea. Oh. Awkward. Awkward? Didn't you openly talk about the cyberbullying story before in the middle of class? Oh, if they said it to her face, yes. But online? There's no law against that in this state. Other states have laws that are particular to the internet, but not this one. Hell, police! They're calling me mean names online! Where? <laughs> so, you know, maybe if you took the computer away or get her off social media, that would help. See, that's the great thing about being cyberbullied, is that you could just turn off your computer if you don't want to deal with it. Regular bullying is obviously a big problem, but this stupid ass movie is trying to act like cyberbullying is some new kind of thing that nobody talks about. I mean, it's the internet. Why not get in contact with the admins of the site if you really want something done? But this stupid ass we gotta police the internet bullshit is stupid. Literally every single person on the internet receives insults and death threats every single day for every single reason. 
I get death threats and insults in the comments from some of my biggest fans and closest friends. It's like when actors in a movie get harassed on social media and the news makes it out to be some big deal. Like yeah, it sucks, but it is what it is. Just block them or private your account if it bothers you so much. You really think your life sucks because you get some mean comments? Why not live for a day in someone's shoes like Chris Chan or Wings of Redemption? But we never seem to talk about cyberbullying for them, right? Why? Because they're bad people? How many of you watching right now said something mean on Twitter to Donald Trump when he had an account? Or at the very minimum to some Trump supporter? What about spreading memes that make fun of Biden or Obama? All these people are still humans with feelings, but I guess it's okay to cyberbully some people? How about instead of trying to police the internet, you just accept it's full of shitty people and you gotta deal with it? It's not a good thing that people are assholes, but that's just how it is. Censorship will only make things worse. Because while you can censor words, you'll never censor thoughts. People will always hate you, even if you never did anything to them. In real life and especially online. Whether or not you censor them doesn't change that fact. You're essentially trying to create a fantasy world where you have this illusion that everyone loves you. But in reality, that just isn't how things are. In elementary school, it was like, hey, there goes Jelly Donut, you know? <laughs> That's a good one. But at least I could go home and get some peace. Now it's like I can't even post pictures on my own profile. Then don't post pictures or just don't read the comments. And now at school, there's this bunch of guys and... They act out the stuff I said right in front of me. They call it the gay boys show. Sounds to me like that's just regular bullying, not cyberbullying, which the school can actually do something about. Don't know why we're lumping the two together. Caleb, I'm really sorry. Now you told me people were picking on you and I didn't say anything and I'm really sorry. Oh no, you did say something. You said something that probably made the situation worse. Never called someone a name online or said they were stupid or ugly. I called Lindsay Fortis a bitch. bitch. Okay, so how come Taylor's mom isn't trying to have the police arrest Taylor for cyberbullying? I mean, she did it too. You see how this doesn't make any sense? You must be feeling really happy with yourself. Is your ego all puffed up and feeling good? This is the person who made a fake account to try and catfish Taylor, but sure. Try and take the moral high ground. Maybe we should get you some pills. And this time we're getting the cap off. I should have just called. You know I care about you a lot. Yeah. Holy shit, we finally get an appearance from the dad. A whole hour into the damn movie. Here's your pill. Dr. Reiki said you can stop when you feel better. I don't think that's how antidepressants work. But today I found out this happens to a lot of people, like these really normal people. I don't know, I wish I'd known that. You thought you were the only one? Did you not? Did you not? Did you not? Did this scene not fucking happen? Did these script writers just forget about a scene they put in their own movie? I was so busy telling you what to do that I wasn't listening to how you felt. Look at you! You're in tears after one day! Okay, I'm convinced these writers just flat out forgot about scenes in the movie. So then Samantha admits what she did. I'm the one who created the James profile. That's right. I am James- Oh god, here it comes. More fucking crying. <laughs> ALL OF YOU ARE BABIES! Don't add new characters into this. I kind of have a limit on how many people I can make fun of in one video. Why exactly does she have this change of heart? Was it because of what Scott said? She was on such a high horse a few scenes ago. It is gonna get better, okay? It's gonna get better. Bitch, you almost made someone kill themselves. Why are we supposed to hate Scott and sympathize with Samantha? This movie just does not make any sense. So now everyone's bullying Samantha. Hooray! How did they even find out? Did Taylor tell everyone? If so, then why did they believe her? They never believed anything else she put online. How to handle it? When you run into unpleasant comments about you online? You mean besides getting even? I'm going all bully on them. I love how bad Ashley's trying to sound. Like she isn't just the crying Wojak in human form. Nah, more like this one. Well, someone has a sick sense of humor. Dude, even, even I, I don't, don't know what I'd say to that. that. Wait, why the fuck does Lindsay hate Samantha for this? Wouldn't the idea of someone she hates his best friend secretly betraying her be absolutely hilarious? I feel like Lindsay should be giving her a high five for doing something that genius. It's fine to fall apart for a little while. It's fine to acknowledge that it hurts. Well, in terms of the internet, you're gonna be acknowledging things all day. Block them. You know, block the sender. You know, 
Or the name you don't want to see what crap they're saying about you. Took me for damn ever to figure that out. God, I never thought of that. What? You can also report it to the bully's internet service provider. Sometimes they'll shut down the bully's account. What? What are you talking about? When the hell does an ISP have the power to shut down a social media account? There's a chance you can stop it from spiraling out of control. Yeah, but you can't totally stop it. Don't know unless you try. Okay, name a time where cyberbullying just stopped and nobody ever got mean comments ever again. Seriously, I would like to know. Passed laws against harassment on the internet. You remember Tina Meyer? Her daughter committed suicide. I remember that. Uh, tragic. After tragic. that, Missouri passed a law. I mean, do we have to wait for somebody to die first? Ooh boy, do you think that's bad? Wait until you hear about gun regulation. No one's making them go online now, are they? Excuse me? Well, they do have delete buttons on computers. I thought that too until I almost lost my daughter. So they, they don't have delete buttons on computers? Why would you word the sentence like that? I feel like a better way would be a delete button wouldn't have saved my daughter's life. I mean, yeah, I thought that at first and it was like too much. It freaked me out. Oh my God, no, it was not because know, of you. I know, Even my mom was like, dude, check your ego. The fuck is up with this kid and his mom, seriously. In an attempt to ruin the internet, Taylor and her mom meet with some journalist, dude. We were talking about how, um, Kids are getting hurt, and adults can't see it because it's happening online. Because as we all know, adults do not have computers. You said your friend Samantha made a fake identity and posted things about you that weren't true? Now that could be an interesting angle. A joint interview with a bully and a bully. Her mother says Samantha agreed to do it. Yeah, that was like the whole 30 seconds. You know what the best thing to do when everyone in school hates me? Do an interview, so now everyone in the world will hate me too. What I did was horrible. And I've never been more sorry in my entire life. Well, I feel like this isn't something that is forgiven so easily. I had reasons that made sense at the time. I thought I was protecting her from a guy. That's the motivation apparently, just, just to protect her by actively making the situation worse. We have no idea why Scott is apparently so evil other than what, he was popular with the ladies and he laughed one time at something he probably shouldn't have laughed at? Bitch, you are fucking psychotic. This woman is a danger to her surroundings and herself and needs to be locked up pronto. Looney bin. Now. Now I say. But the reasons didn't matter once I realized I'd hurt her. The f what the fuck are you talking about? You literally see her at school every fucking day. What do you mean you have no idea how you made her feel? Doesn't feel real. So I guess all the time she was crying and was upset over what had happened wasn't real, then. This is another problem this movie has. The sire rolling demonstrated here is very personal, it is in between peers. But this movie wants to speak for all cyberbullying. So it's essentially comparing the betrayal between friends is comparable to strangers on the internet calling you names. But like, anyone with a brain could see the problem with that comparison. Lindsay and them there after you know I didn't know that. Doesn't matter. I deserve it. No, you don't. Yes, she does. Sure, I suppose nobody deserves to be specifically bullied, but in terms of everyone turning on you and hating you, she did something extremely shitty, arguably worse than anything any of the other cyber bullies did. I'd argue everyone hating her is pretty justified. She's a c Taylor. This can be the first step for you and Samantha to. Oh, yeah, damn, you're literally just walking out the door and like, we can work things out. Your child was the aggressor here. You know, if it's happening to you now, they have support groups for that kind of thing, and it's actually really been helping me. I should mention it was meant to support the victims of cyberbullying, not the cyberbullies themselves. I made that mistake when I called the sexual assault hotline. What? What? Of course, of course you forget him. What a Disney ending. What's next? The whole school bends together and stands up to the bullies? Yeah, I know you think you're probably being funny, but you should know your words actually hurt. Stop. You're making everyone around you miserable. Come to me just like any other bully. Spreading hate wherever you go. Spoke too soon. God damn it. Hey, I've got to say, the way that you guys need to hurt people, it's like maybe you need to talk to someone. Get some help. Stop it. Get some help. So then the whole cafeteria claps because this movie is awful. I guess none of you were bullies either. Okay, I've dreamed about something like that only a hundred times. Yeah, and that's the only place where something like this happens. A dream. Oh, oh yeah, there was once a time when you were in this movie. movie. Damn, Taylor, you really got some shit friends, my god. That his staff is already working on a proposal to make a new law that'll make it illegal to harass minors online in this state. 
Well, if that's the case, Taylor's only 17 years old, reading Lindsay and her friends only have a few more months to wait until meat's back on the menu. What the fuck, it's safe to go online? This movie really went off the deep end with the melodrama, and it was already at that point to begin with. And that was Cyberbully, and what a surprise, it was terrible. The movie has conflicting messages. On the one hand, it tells you about how you can solve your problems by not letting the bullies have power over you and not letting the words get to you. But then it also apparently supports the idea of legislating the internet and having people face legal repercussions just for being mean on the internet. The script is also shitty, the acting is mediocre, with most of the performances not being all that convincing. The dialogue is some of the cheesiest I've seen, and overall the movie just feels unrealistic. I mean, the whole reason the story happens because some bitches hate Taylor from the start, then her asshole brother fucks things up, then her asshole friends fuck things up further. Feels oddly contrived. As I said earlier, I think Caleb would have been a much better protagonist for this film considering how his bullying had much more weight behind it. I mean, none of the things they said about Taylor were even true, it was just people lying on the internet. Most of the characters in this movie are completely worthless and add nothing but to make the plot move forward. What role did the brother honestly have other than to be the one to start the rumors? The dad doesn't do anything, what was his purpose? It doesn't help how stupid and unlikable our protagonist is. Overall, this movie just oddly over-dramatizes something that could have just been handled far more maturely. I mean, most of our population uses the internet and doesn't become an hero as a result. Including the younger viewers, which this movie is meant for. It just seems stupid to throw suicide in this movie when it was completely unnecessary and was only there for shock value and for emotional brownie points. This movie also just has really bad pacing after this moment and just because a boring slog for the remainder of the runtime. Overall, this movie is pretty bad, but it does seem to have its fans, so I don't know, I guess some people like this piece of crap. I can't think of any good qualities about this film at all other than the unintentional hilarity of some scenes. But even that wears off after a while. This is certainly not like the room of teen movies if that's what you're hoping for. While this movie tries to have good intentions, it really just feels like it wants to push an agenda. On the topic of cyberbullying, have you, you seen what else we're up to? What has he been doing? He has been embarrassing that guy who posted that mean comment earlier. Why I agree with the message. I would never give up the opportunity to have a go with someone. This guy's favorite show is Seinfeld. Head head. How about this? Seinfeld is super fucking gay. Earl, what have you done? Open up in there! All Seinfeld haters must suffer! Well, I'm Professor Shadow and have a crappy day. Joe, grab the armor-piercing rounds!